All right, today we're taking a look at best time to buy and sell stock, which <clears throat> is quite a difficult solution to do optimally. Um, you're given an array of prices or prices I is the price of a given stock on the i day. Um, you want to choose a single day to buy one stock and another day in the future to sell a stock and get the maximum profit. So uh, let's take a look at this array and what I'm going to do to make it a little uh, easier to understand visually is I'm actually going to graph it. So give me a sec. Okay, so our array looks like 715364. And if we just look at it, we can kind of tell that one is going to be the minimum and six is going to be the maximum. And how did we figure this out? Well, intuitively, what we were thinking is that one looks like the local min, right? We want to find some sort of local min. And six looked like the biggest number after the local min, right? Biggest number after. We, we, wouldn't, we weren't thinking seven and one is going to be our solution, even though they're, uh, you know, it's a pretty big difference because seven comes before that. We, we looked at this and we automatically knew just intuitively that one and six is going to be our biggest difference because we found the local min and the biggest number after. And that's going to be the key for this solution. So we're going to iterate through this entire array. We're going to do a one pass through the array and we're going to try and find a local min. So the very first thing we're going to do is set a current min variable equal to equal to the very first index. Okay, so we'll have a min here. Um, and then, <clears throat> and then we'll try and see if, if the next one is greater than min, then we're going to update our max, our max diff variable. So we'll have a, uh, min variable, current min, current min, and we'll have a max variable. And every time we iterate through, we'll try and see if the next one is greater than whatever the current min is, then we can just take that difference and see if it's, uh, see if we can update our max variable. If we can't. Um, or if this is, or if this isn't greater and it's actually less than, then we're going to update our current min, right? Our current min is important because think about it. If this is the smallest number in the array, <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry, if this is the smallest number in the array, which we can visually tell that it is, then that means that this, no matter what, is going to be the day that we buy the stock, right? We kind of want the the very minimum value. Uh, we're, we're, we want to test that because we know that the minimum value is likely going to be um, the, the starting index. So we have one and then the very next value is five. So this is an actual difference. So we're going to update our max to four. So because five minus one is four, but we're not going to update our current min. And then we'll do the same thing for three. So three minus one is two, but because two isn't greater than four, we're not going to update four. And now we instead move on to six. So now here, six is greater than one. Um, and the difference is five and five is greater than four. So the max is going to be updated to five. And then finally, we'll do the same thing for four. Um, and four minus one is three, which isn't greater than five. So this is our maximum value. Um, but what if, sorry, what, what about complexity? Um, so the time complexity for this is we're just doing a one pass. We're just iterating over this array once. So this is going to be O of N time where N is the length of the array and the space complexity. Um, we're not actually creating any anything new. The current min and current max are both just uh, variables of size one. So these are just these are just holding integer values. So the space is going to be constant. So this is a pretty good solution. Let's see how it looks in the code. So like I previously mentioned, there are two variables we're going to set. Our max, which is going to be what we're returning. And for now, we'll set the max equal to zero. <clears throat> Remember the problem said that if you can't make any profit, then just return zero. And we're going to let current min equal to the very first index of prices. Uh, we don't really, the, the first index of prices is fine, but if you want to do like infinity, that's also fine. And now we can actually do our one pass. So for let i equal zero, i is less than prices.length and I plus plus, this is going to iterate through all of the prices array. Um, and then we have our condition. If prices I is less than current min, if we've hit a new uh, potential candidate for current min, then we're going to update current min to be equal to prices I. And we can now update the max to the, the math.max of whatever was in max previously and prices I minus current min. Um, this, this isn't really repeating anything um, because if the current min is the prices I, then it, this is just going to return zero and obviously it won't update the max. So if you were worried that this this uh, should be in an else statement, um, you don't really have to have that. Um, and then finally, at the very end, we're done. We can just return our max and this should work. And yep, that's it.